Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys 1-6 scale Marvel figure unboxing and review video. And yes, today is finally the day we're taking a look at none other than Mysterio himself, Quinton Beck the villain from Spider-Man Far From Home. This guy has been a long time coming. There was a question as to whether or not he will come with a Jake Gyllenhaal head sculpt, and of course Hot Toys surprised us by saying, yes, absolutely, we're including one in the box, and then subsequently dropping this figure. Now this guy arrived in record time, two days in fact, that's absolute lightning speed, right out of Hong Kong from ToysWonderland.com. If the website is available, I have included the link in the description below, and yes, they do have 12 month installment plans if you're a fan of paying off your figures over time. Right now though, your favourite Hong Kong based stores are under threat. If you'd like to see more and find out how you can help, check out the YouTube community tab for my channel. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. And here of course we have the box art for Mysterio. Just like the other figures in the line, we do have the Mysterio fishbowl helmet with his name printed on the front. I do love the very Mysterio-esque colour scheme with the green and the purple, but that's not it. More on that in just a second. We do have Mysterio on the side and a big honkin' green Spidey logo on the back. But if you remove the top cover, we're treated to an absolutely stunning piece of box artwork. We of course have Mysterio himself with this kind of holographic fading effect. You can see the edging on the front there. I really love this piece of box artwork. And if you flip it open, we do get an image of upgraded suit Spidey with a bunch of drones. And then there is Mysterio himself. Now I'm pretty sure y'all are as curious as I am as to whether or not this guy is any good. So let's get him out here. And here we have him in his plastic clam tray. Now the interesting thing about the way this guy is packaged is that his smoke effects are actually sitting on top of the figure himself. They are covered in a significant amount of plastic though, so you shouldn't really see any damage to the suit if you have this guy in the box for a long period of time. They've also threaded the cape through the back of the clam tray there, just so it doesn't get creased and damaged as it's in transit to you. And here we have him, old fishbowl head himself. And I have to say, this might just be one of the most intricate costume designs that I've seen for a while out of Hot Toys, and of course the MCU. This thing looks absolutely insane in hand. More on that though a little bit later in the video. Now as you can see he does come with one tray, so what we are going to do now is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Here we have all the accessories that come with Mysterio. Starting off with the display base first, it's the usual hexagonal style display base with an absolutely gorgeous print on top. It's got this lenticular metallic style effect with one of his magical rune symbols and a little bit of a blasting style motif. I really like what they've done here. A little bit of crackling of lightning going on out of the magical effects. Spider-Man Far From Home and of course Mysterio printed on the front with once again his Illuminati style eye depicted as well. Now to go along with the display base you do get a dynamic flight pole. This of course can be used to have him in mid-air. And another thing to add to the display base are these magical smoke effects. They're very simple, you literally just pop them on the base and you will see him using these a little bit later in the video. But the cool thing is you don't even have to use the base to make use of these, you can literally have them wrapping around him. They're a really awesome translucent green plastic, but they've also feathered in a little bit of grey and also a little bit of black in certain sections just to make it look even more dynamic. These things are awesome. I love effect pieces and these are going to make for some absolutely 
perfect figure photos. Now he also comes with two magical effects. They are supposed to go this way around, I do believe, and you can see an imprint for his hand. If you own a Doctor Strange figure perhaps, then you know the way these work. You literally take his hands and wedge them in. These pieces on the back cup around his fingers. As for the piece itself, it's a translucent green plastic with a metallic haze painted over the top. The effect pieces in this set are pretty much top notch and we do get two of them. Now he does come with an array of hands, two open ones, two fists and some relaxed hands that come on the figure. These are incredible. The texture, the paint applications, these things have a ton of detail in them, which nicely mirror the super detailed suit. Now to go along with the surprise head sculpt, you do get these. You might be thinking, Justin, what on earth are these? These are the clip pieces that you use to replace the cape because sometimes in the film, especially when he was talking to Peter Parker without the full outfit on, he didn't have the helmet or the cape on. So yes, you can remove it and then you can just have the unhelmeted look. Now speaking of the unhelmeted look, here we have the Jake Gyllenhaal head sculpt. I'm just gonna say it, I don't know what all the fuss was about. This looks darn near perfect. From pretty much every angle, I see the likeness here. And yes, when you pop the glasses on, it gets even better. Don't worry, you will be seeing that in this video. But the texture, the paint applications, the sculpt itself, I think they nailed it. And for a head sculpt that we didn't even really know for 100% sure we were even going to be getting, it's a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. This is truly spectacular work by Hot Toys. Do let me know what you think of this sculpt though down in the comments below, because I have seen a lot of people saying that it looks less than ideal. I can't but disagree with those people on that. I think this head sculpt is top notch. What we are going to do now though is get Mysterio himself out here and take a closer look. And here we have him, the master of illusion himself, Mysterio, standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And he's looking pretty darn fantastic. I personally am really impressed here. Now he is a pretty straightforward figure because he doesn't really have a head sculpt unless you use the Jake Gyllenhaal sculpt that was surprisingly included. But as it stands, it's a very simple figure to execute until you actually take a closer look at the texture and the detail and the paint applications of the suit itself. And then you start to realize no, it's not really all that simple. There is a lot going on here. A cool thing that some people online have pointed out is that this is a very comic-inspired look for Mysterio. It's almost hyper-detailed, which means some people are planning to use this for their PS4 Spidey display, which, alongside the classic suit Spidey, oh yes, that would be an awesome figure display there. I would love to see that. In fact, I am tempted to do that myself. But for now, this guy is going to be going alongside the upgraded suit because I think they look awesome standing together. But he himself, yeah, he's fantastic. I love this figure. They've done an amazing job here. What we are going to do now, though, is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. And here we have him up close and personal. I said this earlier in the video, but this guy is nothing if not incredibly intricate. There is so much going on. We have a ton to talk about here. Don't worry, we will be switching this out, the fishbowl with the Jake Gyllenhaal head sculpt in just a second, because I am curious how that will either complement or clash with the outfit itself. Now let's talk about the dome first. Yes, it is two separate pieces that are clipped together, so there will be a seam. A lot of people freaked out initially, but I can see exactly why they did it. If you look closely, there's actually a sculpted opaque cloud on the inside of the dome. And when the light catches it, you can clearly see a gap between the outer dome and the inside cloud. And then over the top of the clear section on the inside, they've printed this purplish blue haze. 
it looks awesome. I'm a huge fan of what they've done here. The only thing that I'd say is a little bit annoying here is the fact that he does have very limited head motion side to side. We will cover that more when we get to articulation. Yes, there is also a light up feature in here, and we'll show that with the lights in the studio turned off. He also has a gold gasket that runs around the edge, with a ton of pitting and dirt and grime in the crevices. That also looks awesome. Now, I do want to take a moment to talk about the cape. It's a very intricate pattern, so no, I don't see a Jackson Jew or someone like that coming along and doing a custom cape for a while, because there's a lot to replicate here. There is a ton of detail work, plus there are a bunch of pleats and wires around the edges, it also splits down the middle. So yes, it is fully wired and you can see they've already pre-crimped it, so it kind of follows on with the pleats up top. Am I a huge fan of the material choice here? Yes, surprisingly, I thought I really wasn't going to like it based off some early in-hand pictures. The best way I can describe how this feels is like the Jedi robes that come with Obi-Wan and Anakin, that really soft, very supple material, and then all of this texture is printed over the top. It looks sensational. Now yes, you can remove the cape, and you'll see that when we put the Jake Gyllenhaal head sculpt on. As for the torso armor, it's very Iron Man slash Vision inspired, and I think that's exactly what they were going for. There's all these glyphs and little textured scribblings here and there, plus some blue translucent pieces. I may be bursting a bubble here, but there aren't any LEDs in the chest, which is rather unfortunate, but for me, I'm not hugely fussed. I really like the way it looks without any LEDs in there, because they have included a bunch of texture in those translucent windows, as you can see when the light hits it. It's a very beautiful, intricate piece of armor up top. As for the undersuit, we have these little rectangular sections that do come down to a nice gold blend, which blends into this gauntlet piece. These spikes are a little bit sharp, so please be careful, but they are free-floating, so you can move them around when it comes to posing, and you've already seen the hands earlier, but a ton of texture on them as well. Coming down to the legs, you can see more of the rectangular patterning, and an asymmetrical design for these, I guess we'd call them garter style pieces. Not exactly sure what they are supposed to be, but we'll call them thigh armor just to make it feel a little bit more badass. They are asymmetrical, different design on either side, and I really like the way they look. Lastly, for the boots. These things are absolutely gorgeous. There is a ton of texture here, there's weathering, there's also feathering to the paint applications, and it's a split cut boot design. This time they've made it so the foot cups over this part of the boot, which I really love. I think it works a treat, and the gold paint application, just like the rest of the armor, looks absolutely stunning. Now I'm sure you're curious, the same as I am, as to how this guy looks with the unmasked head sculpt on there, so without further ado... And I did promise to show this earlier, here is the unhelmeted Jake Gyllenhaal head sculpt wearing the Edith glasses that come with the Hot Toys upgraded suit Spidey. Now the arms of the glasses do get stretched out just a little bit, but I think they look incredible on this sculpt. They make it look even more like Jake Gyllenhaal if that was even possible. I'm really happy with how this looks. Taking the glasses off, yeah, the likeness is still incredibly strong. Plus, he does have that actual human neck with the suit cupping around the base there. Unlike with Spidey, whenever you put the human head sculpt on, the suit extends up underneath his neck, which is just not how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to see a real human flesh piece there. That's exactly what they've done. It makes the sculpt look all the more realistic, and it actually has me contemplating whether or not to use this head sculpt instead of the fishbowl in my display. You'll have to let me know which of the two options you prefer, because I'm having a little bit of a tough time deciding which is my favourite. Now just quickly before we move on, I wanted to show you what he looks like with the lights in the studio off and his helmet illuminated. Plus, if you do own a UV LED torch, the front of Mysterio does have the UV reflective paint. Plus, the gauntlets have it as well, and this might just be one of the coolest features, 
but on the cape he has the hidden runes and symbols that light up when they hit with UV light. It's a really nice touch. Now I have seen a lot of people do custom UV displays for the Neon Tech figures, so there's no reason why you couldn't do the exact same thing for Mysterio. Or if you wanted to, you could use the Black Panther display base to illuminate this figure instead of Black Panther, because this effect does look really awesome. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have Stealth Suit Spidey and Upgraded Suit Spidey next to Mysterio. And he is noticeably taller, which makes sense. Quentin Beck, aka Jake Gyllenhaal, is an adult, whereas Tom Holland, aka Peter Parker, in the film is portrayed as a high schooler. So there should be a pretty big size difference between the two. And they nailed it. The proportions on the body, the size and mass are a lot greater than what we're seeing with the smaller frame on Spidey here. And I love that. I love that there's a clear difference between the two. Now I am very tempted to pick up a second Mysterio to have him without the helmet on in the display because there are a bunch of Spidey figures in the Far From Home collection, but only one villain being Mysterio. Which leads me onto something that is a little bit frustrating. So we got the Molten Man display base with Stealth Suit Spidey, the deluxe version. We got a couple of drones with the various other Spidey figures but no Sandman and no Hydra-Man. Not exactly sure why that's the case, because they were the projected villains in the film by Mysterio himself, so I would have liked to have the Elementals, as they're called, in the display, even if they were just in the form of a display base. I am hoping that at some point someone does give us them, because having all three would make for a really awesome display. Just going over articulation on Mysterio. Now bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I'm willing to go. Now starting off with the head of sorts, it is rather restricted due to how it's constructed. We will touch on this a little bit later in the video as well, but just know that how they've actually connected it to the body means that it is rather restricted in pretty much all directions. I mean, you can argue that it's a dome, so it doesn't need to move left and right, his head could just look inside it, which I totally agree with, but I think a little bit more movement would have been good. The arms themselves move up to about there, they will go forward on soft ratchets all the way around, there is a butterfly joint at the shoulder, a swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow, and of course a regular 1-6 scale style wrist peg. As for the torso, this piece is an overlay, so you do get movement underneath it, side to side, forward and back, and also some pivot. The legs will go forward to about there, they will go out to about there, swivel at the upper thigh, a double bend on ratchets at the knee, and of course, my favourite, a split cut boot design for a full range of motion at the ankle. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things about Mysterio. The first annoying thing, and you probably already guessed this, is the fact that you can't really move his head left to right. The way they've constructed this helmet design is you need to remove it to access the light up feature, but this little collar section actually tucks up underneath the armor. That means when you put it back on you do have to thread it underneath, which in and of itself is quite challenging to do, but once you get it back on there, the head movement left to right is quite limited, as well as forward and back. The second annoying thing isn't the way the helmet is constructed, nor is it the seam itself, because we've already addressed that earlier, but it's the pixelation to the print effect. I much would have rathered paint over a print because on a translucent surface you can see the pixelation. Some people might like that because it does look more like an illusion like Mysterio is known to use, but for me I would have liked it to look a little bit more smoky. Maybe even just keep the dome itself completely clear and paint the piece that's on the underside. The third issue, and it's by no means an issue for me personally, but I know it is for some people, but it's the fact there are no lights in the chest. 
I've already seen the Facebook page LED Light Toy do some custom mods to put some lights in there and it looks absolutely awesome. But fresh out of the box, you don't get any LEDs in the chest itself. The first cool thing about Mysterio has to be the way they've done the split cut design for the boot. I automatically know that right off the bat some people aren't going to like this. But I do. I love the way it cups over the top of the boot itself. It has a very, very seamless look. But there's a ton of texture here. There's creases and wrinkles and folds. It looks so incredibly realistic. This might just be one of my favourite one six scale boots that Hot Toys have ever made. The second cool thing is of course the construction of the dome itself. Initially, this was just a painted and printed piece. But now you can tell that there's an actual depth to it. That's why there's this seam along the edge there, because there's a piece that's actually sitting inside meant to replicate the smoke effect. And I love that. It gives it depth, it gives it a little bit more oomph in your display, and it makes it look like there's actually something going on inside the dome. The third cool thing has to be the inclusion, the surprise inclusion, of this Jake Chillenhall head sculpt. I don't know why people are moaning on Facebook. I see the likeness from pretty much every angle I know I've already discussed it. But yeah, it's truly an awesome thing for them to last minute add something that was never solicited with the figure. And for a lot of people, this right here was the push to get them to order it. And I don't blame you, this head sculpt is truly one of their best. Just wrapping up on the Far From Home Mysterio. Now going into this, I was really, really excited. And at the end of this, I feel the exact same way. I am so happy with this release. There were a lot of things that they could have stuffed up, but they didn't. Luckily. Now he's not 100% flawless, I still would have liked for them to have included a few drones. This is Mysterio, he used the drones throughout the entire movie. It was an actual plot point of the film itself, but he doesn't come with any, so that is a little bit weird. Plus, he doesn't have any LED lights in the chest, it would have been a cool effect, but they did kind of remedy that with the UV effect paint. And then they included that Jake Gyllenhaal head sculpt. Huge surprise. They put it up initially, then they took it down, and we didn't know if it was going to happen. But it did happen, and it's a truly awesome sculpt. I'm not making excuses, I totally believe that, because having it in hand, it's very impressive. Hopefully the video has conveyed how good that head sculpt truly is. The sculpt itself, the paint applications, the likeness, it's all there, and the way it fits onto the body so it exposes a real human neck rather than having the suit go all the way up underneath the jawline, I love that. It's way more realistic, and I hope they figure out some kind of way to do that for Spidey as well, because as I said, it just ups the realism factor. Plus, the effects are great, the light-up effect in the dome is awesome, and that printed effect on the outside, coupled with that actual sculpted cloud on the inside, makes for a piece that definitely draws the eye. And the cool thing is, this guy works with your classic Spidey for your PS4 display, or your MCU display. He's got a multi-functional purpose in your collection, and that I really do like. Now, if you are looking to pick this guy up, and he is still available, I will include the link down in the description below to toyswonderland.com. They do have 12-month installment plans if you are a fan of paying off your figures over time. Also, while you're down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video. Basically how it works is you